Former President Donald Trump is facing some big financial hurdles, as you have reported it on before, after some legal setbacks. Can you talk about first how we got here? Sure. Um, so Donald Trump inherited a little bit of money from his dad, um, <laughs> invested it, bought a bunch of real estate, um, became president, uh, committed a whole bunch of uh, allegedly, uh, allegedly committed a bunch of crimes. And uh, here we are. Um, specifically what the deal is this time is he's uh, was found guilty uh, in a New York civil fraud case. And he has to put up more than I think at this point, it's four hundred and fifty seven million dollars in fines and interest. And he does not have that much cash uh, liquid available. So needs to figure out how to go ahead and uh, and pay that fine, assuming it does not get knocked down by a uh, appeals court in the meantime. How can he afford this? Because Forbes does a real time billionaires tracker. And according to that, he is worth two point six billion dollars estimated. So how can he not afford um, about half a billion? It's not all liquid cash. Uh, and, you know, we were in an article yesterday. He actually would have been better for all of his uh, perceived uh, financial acumen. He would have been better off if he had just taken this money and, and invested it in the uh, in the stock market when he inherited it from his dad, as opposed to all of his real estate dealings. But uh, he did choose the real estate dealings. It is such a lot of his money is tied up. Uh, I believe that our latest count is he has about four hundred million dollars. That's liquid cash. And that, of course, doesn't mean he could just write a check for the four hundred million and then figure out what to do with the other fifty seven million. You know, some of that money he needs. You know, you need to maintain a certain amount of cash around to handle a business like that. So, um, you know, he's got to look at some options for how to uh, come up with this cash. You're reporting for Forbes. One Trump asset most likely to go bankrupt. Which one is it? It is 40 Wall Street, which is a building down in uh, in lower Manhattan. I want to read a line from your reporting because I think it paints an interesting picture. You wrote this, quote, the building looks glamorous, ascending 63 stories above the financial district with a copper crown on top. But its finances are not pretty. So talk to us about the finances of 40 Wall Street. Why is it every time somebody singles out and a line from one of my articles, it's the one the editor put in? Um, but yes, kudos, kudos <laughs> to Dan Alexander for that one. Um, yeah, it's not sitting pretty because it is about to see a uh, rent escalation and it does not look like it brings in enough money for that to be worth it. So the issue here is that Trump doesn't actually own the ground lease. It is owned by a German shipping family and he pays rent for it and he manages the building that's on top of that ground. So right now that rent is about $2.5 million a year, but it is going to spike to, uh, it estimated about $16 million around 2033. And it does not look the, like the building is gonna be bringing in enough cash to make that worth it. And then in the meantime, he also has his mortgage on the building coming due in 2025, and that is for $120 million. So he's gonna need to figure out how to, you know, deal with that mortgage, either pay it off or find somebody to refinance it. 